when my daughter was four years old. One winter morning, she tiptoed down to my room, came up to the bed, put her face right in my face in a way that meant not to be ignored, and said, Mommy, I don't want to be brown. Now, before your heart breaks, or you think this is a speech about enslavement or about the fact that critical race theory will never be taught to any children, this is not that speech. Instead, what I want to talk to you about is this mission that's possible and what could have happened if we had spent the past two centuries celebrating the achievements of African Americans in a way that made sure that people knew what those contributions were to America. For instance, I learned last year for the first time ever about Robert Smalls. Robert Smalls was enslaved and worked on the ships of a plantation owner in Charleston. When he found out that the plantation owner was going to sell all of his property, including the people he thought he owned, he did not want to be away from his wife and children. So he commandeered the ship that belonged to the plantation owner, sailed out of Charleston Harbor, down to Beaufort, where the Union blockade was waiting to fire upon any ships. But just before he got near the ships, they lowered the flag, and the Union officers did not fire because they heard singing. Robert Smalls freed his family. It's a great tale of someone who has changed their lives and gotten out of slavery. But that's not the story. That's not the important part. What was important was after that happened, Robert Smalls moved to Beaufort and became a state legislator. And then he became a US congressman. And then he founded the South Carolina Republican Party. That is what we should be teaching. I'm not interested in having a fight about teaching children enslavement and brutality and all of those things that happen. What I want to do is focus on what happened after. That came really close to home for me when in 2017, I was on social media, and yes, I'm on social media all the time, and yes, my Twitter feed still has smoke rising from it, and I saw these beautiful photos of this little girl dressed as iconic black women, and I thought, oh my god, this is amazing. But this was 2017. I was finishing my book on the impact of American enslavement on Americans today. So I didn't have a chance to do anything with them. Well, the next year, 2018, that book called The Burden came out. And I had time to look again. It was Black History Month, and there were those amazing photos. And I'll tell you, it just blew my breath away. There was Daisy Bates, the journalist and mentor for the Little Rock Nine, those children who integrated the Little Rock schools. There was Nikki Giovanni, one of my favorite, favorite poets. And there was Maya Angelou, who taught all women to rise. And I said, oh, I have got to find out who's doing this. So I looked her up on Facebook. It is good for something. And um, it's this amazing young housewife and mom who was taking these photos with her iPhone. And I said, oh my god, they're so amazing. You know, pictures worth a thousand words. I can write a thousand words for all of these pictures. I can write a thousand words for lots more. We could do a whole encyclopedia. She said, I'm not doing that. So I got on a plane, and I flew to Seattle, and I rented a car, and I drove to Kent, and I took her family out to lunch, and I said, you have to let us do something with these photos. So she said, OK, I'll do one book. And I said, well, if you're going to do one book, and only one book, then you have to include boys and turn a young man into those heroes. So she took my grandson, Caleb, and turned him into W.E.B. Du Bois and Thurgood Marshall and Frederick Douglass, and we did a book called That They Lived. This is not about the book. This is about the mission, because we have to make sure that young kids know, and I mean all kids, know that there was a life outside of enslavement. So for instance, Bessie Coleman, she was told that African Americans could not fly and that women would never be pilots. So she moved to France, learned to fly, and came back to become the first African American aviator. Jackie Robinson, when he was 16 years old, he was in a gang. But thanks to his brother's encouragement, he decided to play sports, lettered in four of them, and broke the major league barrier in the, in the, I'm sorry, in the major leagues in the modern era. Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat, thus changing and literally ending segregated, segregated transportation. But Claudette Colvin, nine months before Rosa Parks gave up her seat, 
did not give up her seat, refused to give up her seat. And she was the one who was a plaintiff on the lawsuit. So she is the reason the law changed. And she's one of those hidden figures that we don't always know about. Frederick Douglass. This was my grandson's favorite because he wanted to go to the movies in this hair. <laughs> Frederick Douglass literally was enslaved at a time when it was illegal to teach African Americans to read. But he literally would grow up to be one of the best abolitionists and best orators in history. And he could also go to the White House without an appointment. Shirley Chisholm, unbought and unbossed. She was the first African American woman to be elected to Congress. Duke Ellington, this is my favorite picture because Caleb looked really happy. And what you don't know is we promised him he could go back to Fortnite and eat a cupcake when he finished this picture. <laughs> but Duke Ellington literally was 15 years old working as a soda jerk in a drugstore fountain. And he wrote his first composition at 15, and he couldn't read or write music. It was called Soda Fountain Rag. And he grew up to be the father of modern jazz and one of the greatest composers and band leaders for his whole life. Fannie Lou Hamer, she was one of 20 children born to a sharecropper and his wife, became one of the greatest civil rights activists of all time and is the reason I can vote. Muhammad Ali, who I got to cover for a long time when I worked in Louisville, Kentucky. Muhammad Ali, when he was 12 years old, somebody stole his brand new bicycle. And he went and found this cop and said, I'm going to find out who did it, and I'm going to whoop him. He said, well, if you're going to do that, you better learn to box. And he learned. Three-time heavyweight championship. It was an amazing story, but he wasn't just a great sportsman. He was a great man. Alice Parker. How many of you know Alice Parker? Ever heard of her before? I did not either, but Alice Parker literally invented central heating. She got patent number 1,325,905. And she did it seven months before the 19th Amendment was passed, giving some women the right to vote. We don't know her story. And the sad thing is, this is my friend Carla Walker Miller's granddaughter, Madison, who is dressed like Alice Parker. Except that's not Alice Parker. That's a picture of a white woman that has been used for Alice Parker for decades. So she remains a hidden figure, but I want you to think about her when the snow is falling and your house is warm. So I want to tell you that we do have the answers. We do have what we can do to make things better. That means no black parent will ever have to have a child say to them what my daughter said to me that day, I don't want to be brown. Instead, you might have a little girl just walk in and tell her mom, I want to be Shirley Chisholm. I want to be Aretha Franklin. I want to be Michelle Obama. And it not be, uh, sorry, and it not be unusual. OK, I'm going to like drop that on the floor. <laughs> and you would have a little white child be able to say to her mom, my friend wants to be a US Supreme Court justice. And nobody would blink an eye, because that wouldn't be unusual. Everything about how we teach our children is everything about how we live. So if we want to change the way we live, we have to change the way we teach our children. So let me just say this. There was a little girl in Tarboro, North Carolina, who literally just wanted to be a writer. Well, she grew up to be a writer by trade, warrior by necessity, who lives in three halls of fame, and who was working on a Broadway-bound musical about Robert Smalls. That's me. Thank you. <laughs>